Thanks. Um, thanks for the recording. Um, yeah, welcome in everyone. Um, so yeah, I'll be kind of joining y'all from online today. I hope the food is good for folks in person. I hope people online also got like a bite to eat or some time to relax before the meeting. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, yeah, we have a packed meeting today. Um, so yeah, whenever folks are ready. Um, yeah, thanks for the slide change. Um, so yeah, welcome again. Um, happy to be here virtually as the youth co-chair. Um, I believe Mr. Charles and Ayana are in person holding it down um, as my other two co-chairs in there. Um, so yeah, welcome everyone. Happy April. Um, so yeah, on to the next slide. Um, today, just to kind of set up some meeting object objectives. Um, as you all know, we've been really trying to make sure that we have more like community building, trust building, um, also making sure that people get a better understanding of like the actual impact that they have in the process. Um, and welcome in everyone uh, who just joined online or if you're still coming in uh, in person, we're just going over the meeting objectives and everything. Um, we're also going to be doing some follow up from the previous meeting. Um, as everyone knows, we talked a lot about community building, what people want to see differently in the space. Um, so we're going to kind of have some share out and follow up around that. Um, and then finally, we're going to be focusing on strategy development and focus area statements um, and strategy objectives. Um, so for today, um, yeah, we have the welcome in agenda. I know some folks might be still joining virtually, so welcome in. Um, then we're gonna have, like I mentioned, some follow-up from the previous meeting. Um, so we're gonna do some share out and kind of uh, a report back of a lot of the information that we gathered that people want to see differently, people want to change. Um, we're gonna have a break and we're gonna try to make sure we really stick to it. Um, and then we're gonna have a strategy uh, development breakout session. Um, it's been gonna be really cool because we're gonna be looking at the West Oakland plan and then also the Richmond plan, which they have a meeting coming up to actually finalize their plan um, in the next few weeks. Um, and then we're gonna close out with some next steps. Um, so kind of to set us up for um, some community agreements uh, for the meeting and notes for participation. Um, as always, if you're like online or if you're in person, also one mic, one voice. So if you're in person, raise your hand or, you know, just wait to kind of make sure folks are done with their thoughts. Um, if on Zoom, you can also use the raise hand feature um, in the reactions uh, section at the bottom of the screen. Um, have grace for ourselves and one another. We're all in different spaces physically. Um, so, you know, just make sure we're all taking care of ourselves. Also, stretching, drinking water. If you need to use the restroom, take a bio break, need to eat, whatever you need to do. Um, also, things can get really heavy at times. So if you need to take a step away, take a deep breath, anything like that, make sure you're taking care of yourself. Um, mutual respect for others, making sure we're empowering people, supporting people, um, active listening for everybody. Um, and then we want to make sure that even for the folks online, we're still making sure we're uh, maintaining community building. So yeah, use the reactions, drop some stuff in the chat. I think at least in the virtual room I was in last time, we heard that the chat is a really good place for people to voice their opinions, especially if people don't want to come off mute. So we encourage y'all to continue to do that. Um, and then two new community agreements that are not actually on this slide, we're going to be updating them. Um, but also uh, kind of out of reflection from uh, last month's meeting, Folks feel that uh, sometimes there can be um, more concise, um, just kind of like responses. Um, also understanding that these are people's like lived experiences and we're all different dealing with different things, but also understanding that we only have two hours and we wanna make sure that we're hearing from everybody. Um, so we wanna really maintain like step up, step back. You know, if you know you're stepping up a little bit more, make sure to kind of step back so other people can get a chance to talk. If you're stepping back, I'm gonna challenge you to step up um, and kind of come off mute, drop some stuff in the chat. Um, and we also are gonna start trying out kind of like a two minute kind of response time. Um, it's not a cap or a limit because we don't wanna be like limiting people or wanna make it feel like a 
city council meeting or something like that. Um, but we also, like I said, want to be mindful of the time. And especially if we're hearing from folks um, that have already spoken up a little bit more, we want to make sure that we hear some new voices. Um, so yeah, hopefully people are cool with that new agreement. If so, you know, you can give me some reactions in the chat, give me some thumbs up, some hearts, something like that. In-person folks, in person folks can also give some reactions. Um, and then the second community agreement that's new is that we're going to be popcorning. Um, so also we want to have more engagement from folks. We want to hear y'all's voices. Um, and we know that it can be kind of hard in like this really, really large group. So we're going to popcorn people. We'll give you a heads up. And you also can always pass if you're like, actually, I'm good. I don't have anything to say or I don't want to share out right now. Um, so yeah, also, if you're good with those community agreements, give me some reactions because I know those, those are a little new. Um, if there's any questions, drop it in the chat and then somebody from CBE or BACMED will respond. Um, and then finally, just on to the last community building slide. Um, yeah, so for folks uh, in person, you know, interact with each other. Of course, I know everybody ate um, probably some good food. Uh, say hi to your neighbor, say hi to the person across from you. Um, yeah, just chat with folks. It's nice to be in person. Uh, for folks virtually, um, yeah, say hi in the chat, drop your name, drop your pronouns if you're with any org. Um, you can also respond directly to people's chats now, you know, so if you want to have a little bit more of a conversation, we really encourage that. Um, so yeah, and if there's any CSC members that you're not able to like shout out or talk or you're having any troubles, just raise your hand and we'll try to figure that out and call on you. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for the kind of welcome stuff and I'll be passing it to Alicia for the timeline or framework, sorry. Oh, I don't think we, I think you're muted. Hello? Yes. Great. I uh, just want to make sure I'm clear for those in person and online. Um, I'm in person. Thanks, Michaela. Um, it's great to see everyone here tonight. Um, uh, I'm Alicia Shao from the Air District. Um, happy to be here with you all. I wanted to present and bring back the SERP planning framework to provide a bit more clarity on how we're using this to address air pollution in East Oakland. So starting from the left in purple, we have the planning framework, which has allowed us to scope out air quality concerns and identify priorities in East Oakland. These are laid out in the focus areas that you all help to develop and we are using for strategy development. The next step is in orange where we assess the challenges. We gathered community perspectives and lived experience, adding to what we know by conducting technical analysis and critical information with data and research. Uh, we also identified key issues by developing a shared understanding of problems and challenges, issues that we wanna solve together. These are the focus area statements that we are currently working on. The next step is in blue, where we are planning solutions. This is our aim to identify potential strategies to reduce emissions and exposure in East Oakland. And then next in green, we have to take action. And this looks like implementing those actions and measures we've identified. And then finally, it's important to measure that progress and track and report progress to see how far we are in achieving the community's vision. So we place this planning framework um, to revise the timeline uh, for you today. Um, this is to align with where we are in the plan process. And you'll see the planning phases uh, listed on the left here. And then the major milestones that we have completed or we have yet to complete right next to it uh, under work product. So we have completed our milestones in purple where you see scope and organize um, other than our meetings that we meet monthly. So here we have setting up the steering committee governance, adopting the plan vision and principles and defining the plan's community boundary. 
And then we have completed the majority of our milestones in orange here, where you see assess the challenges. This includes the Air District's development of the emissions inventory, as well as the compliance and enforcement data assessment. Alameda County Public Health shared vital information about health inequities in East Oakland. And then, of course, we had the extensive public engagement effort in the community uh, mapping project that you all were involved in. The SERP community profile is pending and we plan to come back to a future steering committee meeting to present on this. But as you can see, we're in quarter one of 2024 and we're currently in the light blue phase of plan our solutions. Uh, so we are focusing on strategy development and today we're working with steering committee members and community to continue crafting those focus area and strategy statements. These are the first step into creating effective strategies. Alicia, thanks so much for sharing that segment here. We'll move on now to Carly and Allison to share our follow-up from CSC 17. Thanks, Alicia. Hey everyone, hope everyone's doing good today and getting some good sun, sun energy in. Um, my name's Carly Cabral. I work with CBE as the AB617 East Oakland Clean Air Project Coordinator. And Allison will also be co-presenting with me in a bit. Um, yeah, we're gonna give some follow-up from the last meeting. If you could go to the next slide, please. Or actually, sorry, it's me. <laughs> okay. So we heard uh, from the last meeting some, you know, community steering committee likes that we wanted to reiterate. And thank you again for your feedback uh, and your perspectives and opinions. Um, so yeah, we're gonna keep the Zoom chat open to all topics. Uh, hybrid meetings are great and accessible is what we heard. And popcorning to all members to ensure participation is something we heard as well. So. You know, if the facilitator has a question for the group and someone's not speaking as much, they will call on you. Um, but, you know, feel free to say I'm not ready or anything and the facilitator can take it back and call on someone else. Uh, and lastly, interest in starting ad hoc committees, for example, community engagement, legal lawsuits, rights, grievances, and then existing policies. So really excited to hear uh, the excitement with ad hoc committees. And yeah, if anyone would like to, you know, start talking about them with me, feel free to contact me through email, text, call. At this point, everyone has those. <laughs> so um, yeah. And then after May's meeting, we're going to have, you know, in May's meeting, we're going to have some CSC members from other CERT processes from Richmond and West Oakland come in to share their experiences. So, you know, start thinking about maybe some questions you might want to ask them in general or about ad hocs. Um, yeah. You can go to, oh, that was me again. <laughs> Uh, not used to having the control of the slides, I guess. Um, but <laughs> yeah, and then we have uh, what CSC suggests can be improved here. So um, moving forward, we will explain why certain presentations are useful. We will give updates on breakout activities and where they will be going and how they will inform the SERP. Uh, we will give updates on how feedback is incorporated into CSC work. We will give ourselves reminders of avoiding overly technical information, and there will be more outreach to the community to bring more awareness about the SERP. And hopefully, you know, this is something that can be done in like a community engagement ad hoc, for example. Um, yeah. And again, just thank you for your feedback. And we look forward to incorporating these into, um, into improvements to the presentation. And lastly, what the CSC needs more info about, what we heard, uh, what motivates the city of Oakland to implement their part of the SERP, uh, wanting to touch back on emissions inventory data for sure, who and where are the polluters, especially the top polluters, uh, and what are agencies and other partner groups uh, committed to budget, personnel, and resources. Um, and on this point, yeah, I shared the CSC member feedback from March's meeting to everyone through email. So you should all have that. It's all shared with you. 
and Miss Cecilia will get you a copy of that. And then also Marina, we need to uh, translate that for you. So we'll get that translated. Thank you. Oh, and I'll pass it to Allison. Thank you, Carly. Okay, thanks again to everybody for providing your comments and um, and your questions during the March CSC meeting. Tonight, we'll do our best to start answering your questions. And on this slide, you'll see there are four questions. The first three we can answer now. The last question, number four, may be best answered through uh, looking at examples from other SERPs. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. So if we're ready, we can start looking at these questions. Question one is, when do we get to start drafting the SERP? And I'm actually going to move back to slide eight. So pardon the going backwards, but this is a slide that Alicia um, already told us about, but just to highlight some things, the answer is that the CSC is already doing the work on the SERP. For example, slide eight shows that the CSC has, um, has already set the SERP vision and principles and decided on the SERP boundary. So if, I, if you can see my cursor, um, we are talking about the plan visibles in the purple and the plan boundary. The CSC has also done work that will feed into the community profile. You may remember the community mapping project, which we reported on in the November meeting. And that was when we talked to CSC members and community members and collected all sorts of information, gathering your wisdom and experience living in the community. And that will be reflected in the SERP as well. In addition, we've also had some technical presentations back in uh, August, we heard from, um, sorry about that, we heard from uh, emissions inventory update and also from the county on health inequities, and you can see that that is also reflected here. So this, these are just examples of the work that we've already accomplished and that will feed into the SERP. So that, um, I hope, provides some information about the first question. Moving on. What are the goals for the SERP? So the goals need to be developed by the CSC. And you remember, may remember that back in September, we did an exercise on identifying the, the goals that folks might be interested in developing. We will return to that topic, but just as a refresher, um, we reported out in October that folks were interested in these, these themes in the goals, working with the business community, putting people first, getting funding and addressing multiple urgent community challenges such as trash and air pollution. Okay, so question three is, what are the SERP roles and responsibilities? And I'm going to move to the next slide and we can start digging into that. And just as a note, we'll return to the, the fourth question a little bit later. So generally speaking, the SERP roles in re-speaking are that the CSC sets the SERP vision, identifies key issues, and designs strategies. The co-chairs provide leadership and guidance both to the CSC and to the co-leads. Community members, including CSC members, provide their wisdom and their experience to the process. Co-leads provide guidance and technical information, and CBE in particular will also bring the wisdom that they have from working in the community for many years. Local governments bring their own tools, such, for example, the city of Oakland brings its land use authority, CAR brings technical support and its own authority, just like the Air District and the city. So this is a broad overview of the different roles and responsibilities. Okay, so I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into CSC member roles and responsibilities. And this is from the East Oakland CSC Charter. So the CSC role is to advise the co-leads 
to review and inform technical analysis, to engage with your local, your social networks, and to add this collective uh, wisdom to the process, and to review and inform the strategies to solve air quality issues. Digging a little bit deeper into the air district roles and responsibilities, the air district is responsible for convening the CSC SERP adoption. Our board of directors will adopt the SERP. We're also responsible for rep reporting annually on SERP progress to the CSC, to our board, and to CARB. And we're also responsible for making sure that the SERP includes required elements such as the vision and principles, the community profile, and the strategies that the CSC has identified as addressing their concerns. So the remaining question on slide 13 was, what can a SERP include and what can a SERP accomplish? And to answer these questions, we are going to have a breakout activity tonight that asks folks to take a look at slides in this packet that covers both the Richmond, North Richmond, San Pablo SERP and also the West Oakland SERP. And I'm just gonna quickly provide an overview of both of those plans to sort of give you a grounding. And to do that, I'm gonna slip, uh, strip, slip ahead to uh, slide 18. Our first example is the path to clean air. On the right, you'll see a slide, uh, an image that shows the geographic area. Note that this plan was developed by a CSC with the Air District, CARB, and local government. And it contains actions that go beyond existing efforts to address air pollution and um, sources that drive health disparities. And that the CSC adopted this plan just a few weeks ago, March 25th, and next steps are for the Air District Board of Directors and CARB to adopt this plan. So this is something that just happened now. And I'm gonna fast forward to slide 28. And here is, sorry about that, a West Open, Oakland example. Now this plan was adopted in 2019 so it's a great example of what a SERP can accomplish because we've had time to implement it. And in fact, a number of agencies are doing just that right now. Um, the Air District, the Port of Oakland, the City of Oakland, Alameda Ca County, and CARB are all uh, actively working on implementing strategies from the West Oakland SERP. As of now, about two thirds of those strategies are completed. Um, and including some of those of the two thirds completed are what we call ongoing. And for example, that, that would be a strategy that has no particular end date. An example of that would be incentive funding that will continue after the SERP is completed. So that's a general overview. And I'm gonna pass it back to Carly to explain to us what exactly the activity is. And to do that, I'm gonna move us on to slide 35. Here we go. Thanks, Allison. Yeah, just in case you're flipping through all the slides, um, we're gonna come back to those to do this breakout activity. Um, but yes, this breakout activity is gonna be kind of like a scavenger hunt activity. Oh, sorry for people online, now you can see me. Um, yeah, so just to get a better understanding of what the SERP, what can be in the SERP and what it can accomplish, we're going to do this activity. We'll get into breakout group, groups and flip to your assigned slides. We'll have two groups in person and then two groups online. Online rooms will be facilitated by Michaela Patton and Andrea Pineda, the two youth uh, CSC members and Anish from the Air District and I will be supporting light facilitation in person. Each of the two groups online and in person will be assigned to look over highlights of the Richmond and West Oakland SERP. Uh, we recommend going over the slides first and then looking at the questions on the sheet of paper. We will give you all or that I think is in the binder, um, but we'll let you know right now. Uh, and 
uh, on the on the paper, you'll be answering the questions there um, for the slides assigned to you. Um, so yeah, I think it would be good if you know we could assign in person. Yeah, and online folk can do the same. So maybe we could split it up like four and four. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So you guys are gonna, okay, you guys. You guys are going to do the Richmond example, which starts on slide. Slide 18. Okay. So and for you guys, it starts at slide 28. Okay, great. So hopefully everyone's in their groups now. Woke up starting at slide 28. And Richmond starting at slide 18. Slide 34, I think. Yeah, slide 34. Okay, 34. Oh, yeah, 34. Oh, I'm with the city of Oakland for this district, so I'm not sure if this is just for oh, PSE or yeah. community members should um, pay this. Yeah, if you want, you could totally sit down and join. Uh, we have the West. Okay, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, if both groups could please pick out a scribe and a report out person, that would be great. And everyone has the questions. Cool. Okay. Yeah, so you guys got the questions now, the questions on your sheet of paper, what's the air quality concern? What do you think are the consequences or impacts of the concern on the community? Uh, what is the strategy or action that addresses the concern? Which orgs and agencies are responsible? What questions do you have for the CSC of your location? So we have until 7.40 to do this activity. And we'll give alerts for any time that, you know, we want to mark, like 10 minutes, five minutes. Oh, sorry, 6.40. Thanks. <laughs> I'll blame it on that, yeah. <laughs> Make them hard. And engaging in activity. Yeah, I have I grew up here. My my uh, my mom's parents moved here. They relocated. So I'm very proud of that. My
Sorry to interrupt, but uh, we're going to give folks five more minutes, um, just as an alert. Oh, 
uh, friendly reminder, folks, we have about five minutes before we're all coming back for report outs. Okay, guys, the ball is the 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 All right, everyone. Sorry, it looks like we reached to 6.45. Want to make sure we have enough time to report out and hear the report out from um, the online groups as well. They'll be there in 30 seconds. Okay. 30 seconds. <laughs>
online oh. books are back now. Thanks. Yeah, gonna bring it back together. Cool. Uh, great. Yeah, I think this was a great activity. Sound like some great conversations were happening. Yeah, maybe the online folks wanted to go first, either the Richmond or West Oakland to share out uh, a highlight of what you learned that was new to you um, with this information. And you have one minute to share out. Any takers? I can start for Richmond. Um, sorry. But um, yeah, we looked at the Richmond plan and I think we saw that there's definitely a lot of similarities between like East Oakland, Deep East Oakland and Richmond, just kind of like different types of industry. Um, people highlighted like the pollution um, that's in Richmond as a big air quality concern, the freeways, um, the port, the industry there, Chevron, uh, general chemical. Um, yeah, also kind of like old housing as like a community um, challenge and kind of like what that means uh, when emergencies do happen. Um, people also talked about how like low uh, air quality impacts community health and then also just makes people feel disengaged around the process, not really knowing like who to reach out to if there is a challenge or there, if there is a concern. Um, and then also air quality impacts people that have um, poor ventilation or aren't able to like close their windows or be indoors um, during times of like wildfire and stuff. Um, so yeah, folks want to see like reduced pollution, increased access to health services, um, and more protocols uh, at Chevron is what people kind of gathered from the few slides. So I don't know if that was a minute, but hopefully. Uh, <laughs> so I'll pass it. Yeah. Hi, Kayla. Thank you. Um, yeah, did the West Oakland group online want to share out whoever was the report out person? Um, I can do it for the group since I don't think we were able to pick someone to share out. Um, but yeah, so the West Oakland um, Community Action Plan is on its fifth year. Um, their air quality concerns range from emissions from trucks to emissions from bo the boats in the port. Um, there's a lot of fugitive dust and shredding, shredding and recycling businesses in the area, um, as well as like open burning and a lack of urban greenery. Um, and so this stuff was causing poor health outcomes, asthma, respiratory illnesses. There was a lot of exposure for people who both lived and worked in West Oakland. Um, yeah, and it seems to be, um, there's also a lack of access to outdoor space, to green space. Um, and also lack of knowledge on the resources and reporting that relate to these issues. Um, yeah, and so our slides kind of talked a bit about some strategies and actions that um, the different people involved have taken. So people from the their CSC, from the city of Oakland, from the Port of Oakland, from um, the California Air Resources Board, the Air District, um, and local orgs like CBE, um, they they were able to do a couple things, um, like improving their outreach, um, replacing their trucks with zero emission or cleaner trucks, um, reducing emissions from port, um, having a community complaint process so the community can get more involved in their in the changes, um, and also they started an urban greening plan, um, the urban forest plan. Thank you. Um, thanks for sharing. Sorry to have to cut it short. We do have this information. We're going to um, make sure to share it afterwards. Uh, did someone from the Richmond or West Oakland team, would they like to share first for a one minute report out? All right, Ayana. Yeah, hello. Okay, uh, we're representing the Richmond team. And I guess the main part of the concern is that 63% is done by the fueling uh, refining system. We feel that that just shows the lack of, uh, you know, care for poor people. Because obviously, if you're rich, you have a big company, you can pollute all you want off, uh, you know, take advantage of poor people. And then uh, we noticed that, you know, a lot of a lot of people in these communities don't know why they're sick or why they're why they have asthma or breathing problem. And we need to make sure that they know why they're sick. And um, all these uh, agencies like the Air District and whatnot, um, we need to hold them accountable and make sure that they hold these uh, 
major pollutants accountable and make sure that they, they pay some type of restitution so they can, you know, support the medication bills for all these people. And then um, we need to also make sure that they're more transparent about who's funding them and what they're doing with the funds in an itemized list type of way. And then um, we, uh, I think that's that's pretty much it. I mean, inform the community, make sure they give back to the community and then make sure they hold these uh, corporations accountable and actually do some search steps to remediate pollution. Yada. Okay, thank you so much. All right, what's so Clinton? Uh, yeah, so um, we identified uh, the, the air quality concerns as being primarily primarily around the port, diesel, fugitive dust from aggregate recycling, truck traffic, and idling trucks. Um, uh, uh, what we put down for the consequences or impacts are high rates of asthma, cancer, reduced life expectancy, disability, impact on livelihood, medical cost, genetic impact, infrastructure damage, and traffic congestion. Uh, as far as the strategy or actions, um, we didn't write them all down, but um, some big ones were funding for emissions reduction projects, um, enforcement, uh, in an increase in enforcement. Some examples could be, some examples that we put down that we would like potentially would be um, increased fines and increased uh, inspections and maybe some random inspections. Um, a better complaints process was something that was implemented in the WOCAP um uh something called the ivan system i don't think it was on the slide but um that sounded cool and then as far as what agencies or organizations were responsible in west oakland um the port caltrans city of oakland BACMED, carb maybe the epa department of health ac transit uh potentially um well we were also talking about east oakland again and and thinking about like the rail line and amtrak since they go through here too um and that's where we stopped Thank you. Um, thank you everyone for working together and doing this breakout activity. It sounds like it was really informative for people. Um, so yeah, we just did the report out and here we have some next steps. So this down here. Um, so addressing what we heard from the last March meeting, CSC number 17, which includes addressing your questions through a Google document that is accessible to all CSC members. So um, at this point, I have, you know, sent that document to your emails, you should have it there, and questions that the Air District can't get to in the meetings due to time or whatever will be put in this Google document, so it'll record who asked the question, you know, the date, the CSC meeting number, and uh, who from the Air District replied, um, so... So yeah, and that will be given to Miss Cecilia in a copy form and also uh, will need to be translated for Marina. Um, yeah, and just to also reiterate, I think I put this in the email as well, but uh, we've been working on a strategy development resources reference guide that will really help in you all in you know writing the strategy development process. And this will be a running document that will include important presentations, information to reference when working on strategy writing. And uh, some more things we wanted to address from the last meeting, addressing more of your questions in the upcoming May meeting and incorporating your feedback into future CSC meetings. And then lastly, following up about ad hoc meetings for those who are interested. Again, if you're interested, let me know, contact me. And um, yeah, for May's meeting, again, we're gonna have the CSC members from Richmond and West Oakland here. So, um, you know, think about questions for ad hocs. How often did they meet? What kind of ad hocs did they have? Was the meeting time enough for them to gain more traction for the SERP? Is there anything they would have done differently or lessons learned? And on this note, uh, really quickly, just wanted to ask, uh, because ask uh, CSC members if anyone might be interested in hearing about the Argent tour and discussion, how that went. We have uh, three members who joined willing to, uh, you know, share their experiences and me helping prep them and stuff. So wondering if people online and in person would be interested in the following Thursdays, April 18th, which is next week from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., or May 2nd, which is in three weeks from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So people online, if you could please use the chat to confirm which date that you'd be interested in joining this ad hoc. People in person, you can raise your hand if you'd be interested, and I'll follow up with you after this meeting to ask which date you'd prefer. 
Uh, so I'm not seeing any hands, only seeing one, two, three. Okay. Well, I'll follow up with people afterwards um, in general. And yeah, if there isn't enough interest for either of these dates, we can figure out a way to incorporate this into May's meeting. Thank you. Thanks all. And I'll pass it to Alicia. Actually, um, we should take a short break. Oh, sorry. Yeah, break. <laughs> yeah, just like five minutes or so. Thanks, everyone. Hey, Carly, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Anna. Okay, um, uh, just folks are asking if you could put the two dates you're offering in the chat because folks online are responding to the question you asked, but there's uh, uh, people are confused what dates so, you're mentioning. It was May 2nd, which is in three weeks from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh -huh. Or April 18th or next week from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. April 18th. April 18th. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So that's the first, that's the one closest to today. And then, yeah. or May 2nd, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've got some responses in the chat, so I'll write them down for you. Thanks, Anna. All right, folks, I know we had a brief break, but we'll be getting back to the action now. Alicia, would you be able to take us away with strategy development and our breakout session for this topic? Yes, thanks, DJ. 
Uh, welcome back, everyone, from break. Thanks, um, thanks for your engagement. And I hope that the last activity gave you some ideas on what strategies can look like in a SERP and what a SERP can accomplish. Um, as you can see, strategies come in various forms and levels of detail, depending on community concerns. Um, so bridging into this breakout session activity, I just wanted to give a quick recap of what we did in February. We learned about writing focus area and strategy statements for each of the five focus areas, and we will continue this exercise today. The statements will help us narrow down these uh, community-specific concerns to develop more effective strategies. By brainstorming these focus areas, your input will generate ideas and content that will help the co-leads to come back with draft, refined focus area statements, and that's where we'll start to develop strategies in the future for your review. We'll also continue to address and share back information during committee members have questions about the process so that this can be an ongoing and iterative process for you for strategy development. So for today, the strategy development breakout sessions activity will continue brainstorming and crafting those focus area and strategy statements. These statements are grounded in our understanding of the community concerns of what we know gathering from various sources, such as the technical data, the complaint information, health and demographic information, and insights from past meetings. So focus area statements, they're brief sentences that describe the community concerns and their impacts to the East Oakland community, while strategy statements outline community members' desired outcomes and describe the changes that you all want to see as a result of the strategy or action. So together, the focus area statements and strategy statements are the first step toward our shared goal of developing effective strategies. So to continue the brainstorming and crafting focus area and strategy statements, we have set up an open house format where steering committee members and community can self-select which focus area you'd like to work on. Whether you're in person or online, we have about 40 minutes to work on this activity. For in-person attendees, we have five focus area tables located in the dance room. For online attendees, we have the option for you to work in light facilitation or to work independently. We encourage you to use the reference materials we provided, and we also have on hand floating support staff to assist in answering any questions that you may have. Um, outlined with the few resources, I'll just let, um, let you know what we have to support you in these breakouts. As Carly mentioned, we have worked on a strategy development resources reference guide. This includes the important past presentations and information on the emissions inventory, the interactive community mapping project map, and finding presentations. Those are printed out for all the steering committee members in your binders, and we also have them accessible online. We also have resource documents that contain a summary list of community concerns that have been identified from community over um, the past steering committee members and the community engagement efforts, as well as CBE's campaigns. We also have the focus area and strategy statement examples on the Oakland airport and illegal dumping from the Mad Lib breakout activity in February. For the activity, we'll provide a five minute warning and after the activity for those attending in person, please hand out um, any of your handouts to me or another Air District staff member. We want to make sure we take in all the information um, that you provide us today. Uh, so wanted to pause here um, and um, actually pass it over to our floating. Oh, hot. I can take questions. Sure.
Yeah. So we printed out the strategy development resources guide. That should be the first um, document. And then we have um, the past presentations printed out in order of it listed on the guide. And for those online, um, we have accessible links that are um, available on the resource guide as well. Thank you, Gabrielle, for that question. Any other questions? Okay, so um, wanted to pause here and pass it over to our floating air district staff who are available as a resource if you have any questions. Um, we'll start with uh, Simran who's attending online and then we can popcorn it to the folks that are uh, attending in person. Can I pass it to Simran? Or maybe we can come back to her. Um, can I have um, Laura, would you like to come and introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Laura Keket. I'm in our rural development group, Laura Keket, for the people online. Um, I've been with the Air District about 10 years, uh, rural development for like five or six and was in grants beforehand. And I spent a lot of time working with Richmond on the path to clean air. So I'm um, happy to provide any kind of insight into how that process went. And I'll pass it to Steve. Hi folks, I'm Steve Reed from the Air District. I work in our modeling section. You might remember me from last August. I gave a presentation on the emission inventory for East Oakland. Um, I was also involved in developing mission inventory for West Oakland and Richmond as well. So I think I'm going to start in the transportation section, but I'm free to float around if there are questions mm -hmm. on, on the data, mission inventory, sources in the community. Let me know. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Janet Carrasco. I am also part of the Bay Area Air Quality Management District. I am part of the Compliance and Enforcement Division. I have been in this division for the full five years that I've worked at the district, and I just recently moved into the operations part of that. But before that, I actually was an inspector for the Richmond area, including um, working as one of the inspectors for the refinery, uh, for the Chevron refinery specifically. So if you guys have any questions in terms of compliance and enforcement, you can always uh, just ask me, as well as um, you guys probably remembering a presentation that I did not too long ago about our enforcement and complaint data and things like that. Hi, everyone. I am Kate Hogue. I've uh, been with the Air District um, since late 2015, and before that was with EPA. I'm in the Meteorology and Measurements Division, so our division um, handles the air and emissions measurements that the Air District does or that we require other people to do. And we also um, forecast air quality. Um, you might uh, know of Spare the Air, things like that, as well as helping um, uh, different programs at the Air District uh, use our data and help communities that are doing their own air monitoring or data analysis projects as well. So happy to be here. Um, and then I will pass it to Simran to introduce herself. 
Thanks, Alicia. Sorry about that. My computer froze. Um, my name is Simran Zoot. I'm in the permitting division um, in engineering, and I help to um, permit some of the facilities that are in this neighborhood. Great. Thanks, everyone, for your introductions. Uh, feel free. We also have support staff uh, available um, if you're not exactly sure what um, um, who We just lost, sorry, we just lost sound in the virtual room. And video as well from Mossum's computer. We don't have any sound yet. Sorry, folks, they're working on it right now. Okay, for folks who are joining us virtually, um, Mossum just uh, created a poll uh, to, let, to let us know your preference, um, whether you'd like to work on your own or in a facilitated group, um, please just respond to the poll. Well, I hope for people in the virtual room, y'all have been inspired by West Oakland and Richmond. Um, y'all to be exciting. I know people have wanted to get to like focus areas and strategy development. So now we're here. And I think the breakout rooms just opened.
Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, I think we got sound and video back on folks in the Zoom room who are working on their own. Um, feel free to let us know if you have any questions. If you want to join another group, I can send you to a bro breakout room. Um, just send me a message. Thank you.
testing testing sound okay
could come back to the main room. Hey, Alicia, to get us started with our next uh, segment on how the CERC can help East Oakland as we wrap up this uh, breakout session. Thanks, DJ. Um, folks online, I'm sorry that you see these labels um, from the screen pointing at the main room. Uh, we're going to try to figure this out for next time. Great. Um, thanks, everyone. We're uh, coming back out from the strategy breakout sessions. We hope this was a very informative exercise. And I just wanted to follow up on some next steps here. And so as a reminder, um, through the activities that uh, you've worked on this evening. We hope that um, you understand that there's different types of strategies and actions that we can use to address our community concerns. So these are some of the strategies and actions um, that can help East Oakland and that can be a part of your SERP. They can look like partnerships and building alliances with various organizations and agencies. It can be funding to provide grants and incentives. It can also look like enhanced enforcement and penalties for polluters. It can also look like actions to implement rules and regulations as well as actions for additional research and data to help better understand the community concern and the best course of action. So these are some of the options uh, you'll have available for strategies and actions and to continue to help East Oakland reduce emissions and exposure in the SERP. And so for next steps, um, by providing us feedback on these focus area and strategy statements, your input will generate ideas and content that will lead the co-leads to come back with draft refined focus area statements and better strategies in the future for your review. For next steps, uh, CBE and Air District staff will synthesize the information from the statements that you've worked on tonight, as well as uh, February statements on drafting and then refining those focus area statements. The co-leads aim to bring back the refined focus area statements at a future steering committee meeting and start to develop strategies with you all. 
We also hope to come back at a future steering committee meeting and lay down some of the foundation for writing strategies and provide some of that information and guidance so that the co-leads can begin writing draft strategy content for the CSC to review and provide feedback. And so that's uh, that's all I had for next steps and I wanted to pause for any questions that folks may have either online or in person. Oh, yes, Miss Cecilia. For the Air District, I would like to know, have you all set a timeline on this toxic, the toxic that we have here? Have you all set my Like a toxic community. Like apply, like report. That's toxic, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we have going on here in the community. Can you Thank clarify? You. Your question I'm about, about this toxic air that we have. Do y'all have a timeline on reducing it, at least reducing it, the toxic air? Yeah, so this, this would go back to the purpose of why we are all here. That's a great question to help just kind of ground us back to why we all are here and why we are meeting every month to develop this plan. Um, the Community Emission Reductions Plan, it's a five-year plan, and we're currently five years. we're currently developing it. Um, generally, development uh, of the plan is about a two, two-and-a-half-year planning process, and so we're currently um, working on it with you day in and day out and meeting monthly so that we can reduce those toxic air contaminants. Yes, uh, Cynthia. Testing. Oh, um, I, I just want to uh, maybe a part two to that question. As we are working on these forms and talking with one another, I guess what I'm trying to understand, what, what is the air district currently doing to reduce toxic air? Like, is there a list of things that you all do on a quarterly basis, a regular basis, just trying to understand. So we know whether one to know what you do and then two, how to incorporate that or expand that in our recommendations. Yeah, so I wonder if, um, so tracking and progress is a big part of the plan. It comes at the tail end. Um, I'm wondering if going back to the timeline would be helpful. Um, so let me just go ahead and do that. Hello. Yeah, I think maybe what Cynthia was trying to ask is like, in the meantime, what is the air district doing to reduce air pollution um, not related to the SERP? Yeah. Yes, um, so all all our activities, our, our mission for the air district is um, working on improving air quality across the Bay Area. So all the activities, um, the folks that you see here today, our rules division, our compliance and enforcement division, our engineering division, um, our technical folks uh, from monitoring and measuring and meteorology, um, all of our activities are um, surrounded in uh, improving air quality across the Bay Area. Alicia, we have Simran online raising her hand. Yes, go ahead. I, think, um, I, I just wanted to add to that. Um, some of the things that we're doing to reduce um, toxic emissions in um, communities that are particularly overburdened are um, 
um, working with our rules team to develop more stringent um, standards that would have to be met in neighborhoods that are already overburdened. So recently, um, our rules division did pass a regulation that certain sort of tightened those um, standards in communities such as East Oakland, um, specifically for toxins. So whenever we evaluate um, facilities for permitting, um, they must meet a lower threshold now for um, toxic emissions in a community such as East Oakland that's already been um, overburdened. So that's one of the things that we're doing. Um, particular that's um where I am involved in permitting, but um I'm sure that there are other um uh, strategies that we implement throughout the air, air district as well. Thanks, Simran, for that. Um we we also uh do have our strategic incentives and uh technology implementation office that provides grants and incentives for, um, you know, improving air quality in various ways, um, you know, uh, in terms of kind of renewable technologies and, you know, taking old polluting um, equipment and providing grants for cleaner, uh, cleaner technology and cleaner equipment. So those are some of the examples that uh, we have that we're currently working on. And then we will also kind of elaborate on those in future steering committee meetings as well. And I see Kyle's hand up. Can I pass it to you, Kyle? Yes, I was wondering uh, how much uh, coordination with local government or uh, any of the uh, committees that uh, local governments have um, that the that you guys work with so you could probably uh, implement or uh, give direct data to yeah great question uh, we currently on our steering committee we do have uh, local agencies we have the city of Oakland and Alameda County Public Health where we um, have exchanged uh, you know important data that really grounds the SERP in health and demographic information and we will be collaborating with those agencies as well as, um, our, our state agency partner in the California Air Resources Board in developing these strategies to address your concerns as well. Thank you. Great. I know we're at time, so if there are any other questions, feel free to reach out to me by email. And I will pass it to Charles to close us out. Before we close out, um, my co-chair want to say something. Thank everybody who attended tonight. It would be nice if we can have some more people actually physically here. So the next run, I think we'll do some kind of survey to see who can make it for the next round. I think it would be best if we can have more people physically here so we can meet the rest of our CSC members. And I would like to ask our CSC members, how did you like this interactive type of activity tonight? Say that again. Can I, can I hear y'all please? So we know that we could do this some more. Can I get, can I get something in? Cause this is related to, I guess I'll keep it brief, but my question before was like I appreciated what we did tonight. It feels like a bit of a repeat of what we've been doing for the past eighteen months, as far as just some of this like basic formational stuff. But like I'm wondering at what point opportunities like this are going to be extended to larger community, um, because this felt it felt like we're essentially trying to crowdsource and like community based research to develop these priorities and these strategies and it's like it's not community-based if it's like 12 of us it's like that's just that's just as bad almost 
as just having random folks that have no connection or interest in East Oakland deciding and dictating like, yes, we're from the community, but I feel like there's so many people here, so many different perspectives and experiences that aren't naturally going to be represented here. But I feel like we might be able to help guide in actually making this something that's more generally in the more like it's, town it, and that's the thing like sure. people need so to know about like this like 18 months into mm-hmm. it like if we're having a csc if we're developing strategies if we're really honestly trying to get community feedback and implement community priorities into the strategies like we got to get community in the table we have to make sure whether it's social media or a website media outreach whatever it takes collaborations with other local organizations including and there was talk about trying to get more cbe members who aren't part of the csc involved in this but there are also other organizations that are interested in environmental issues other other organizations that aren't interested in environmental issues right youth up so some more you know talking about do you get to be on the committee for community engagement and and outreach that's the thing like we are the community Community engagement and outreach for 18 months. The whole reason we're supposed to be on this is because we understand AB 617. Yeah, we understand uh, back mud. We understand a little bit about the issue on a higher level that we want to like meet about this every month, but we're not dictating what the community strategy is going to be. It needs to actually be organically community based. It needs to engage the community. If we go through this for three years and I walk down the block and not a single soul knows the first thing about what we're doing here, about how it's impacting their lives. That's why we never had any this. opportunity to to be in the room or uh, provide any input, then like, what are we actually doing? And, and we're gonna definitely need you on the, on those committees then, cause you got some ideas. That's why I signed up for it in 2020. Would the, would the CSC feel comfortable if we did something specifically for CSC members at the next meeting, where we set a time where we could talk about things like this? We could put that on the agenda. And like, correct me if I'm wrong, like if I'm misguided, but I feel like the whole premise of this is about a deeper, broader community engagement. And so like, if part of what we're planning for is like, how do we actually launch this and make this something that other community members are aware of mm-hmm. and empowered to contribute to, you know, not just I. Just I, I understand that, but I'm not trying to think that's something about Mine works, mine works. Uh, no, mine's worse. Mine's worse. No, I just I want to be mindful that I'm I'm gonna let people finish their thoughts. I'm not gonna cut people off. I'm not intimidated by that, but I'm also respectful. Um, I also want to highlight. I've been reading some of the chat, and there are folks saying that they love being online. Someone said they will never join an in-person meeting because they have to work. I want to be very clear that I have a three-year-old and the only reason I'm here is because I frantically find childcare every time we have a meeting. So to make comments around like, well, we're all together, we get things done is really insensitive. It's also not taking into account folks that have caretaking, accessibility needs, disability justice. And so just because I just want to speak for myself, just because I'm physically here, you have no idea how much effort it takes to get here. So I just want to be mindful of those kind of comments because I will easily go back online and 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 not have to worry about childcare. So I just want to say that. And it's a community of tens, if not, you know, a little over a hundred thousand people, like you know, again, if if you limit the modes of participation, like we're going to limit participation, we're not going to get a full voice of the community. So yeah, I 100% agree with that. And I guess that will, um, any announcements? Yo solamente quiero decirles a las personas que vinieron, ¿verdad? Enseñarnos a nuestra comunidad, ¿verdad? Para aprender mejor. Y gracias por contestarme esas preguntas. I'm just very grateful to be um, part of this meeting and to have my questions answered. Este, yo sé que muchas veces tenemos preguntas que no podemos contestar. And I know there's a lot of questions that many times we can't find the answer and it can be difficult. 
Gracias por contestarme y sacarme de todas esas dudas que tenía yo, ¿verdad? But thank you for answering the questions I had and taking me out of my doubts. Y solo quiero decirles que, que nos hace falta más, ¿verdad? And más alcance en nuestra comunidad para just, estar mejor organizados. And I just want to say that sí. we need more organization. Y formar una coalición para ser más grandes. Gracias. And to create a coalition so that we can be a bigger and stronger group. Mm -hmm. Oh, Miss Cecilia, one second. I just wanted to make an announcement that I will be honored on May the 1st from the East Bay Housing Organization. Yes, it's yes. going to be held on May the 1st at 252 Second Street. That's going to be Block 15. Jack London Square, 5.30 p.m. And they will be serving food. It's a free event. They do it every year. It's, it, it's the um, East Bay Housing kickoff day. So if you all can come, please come and see this elderly being honored. <laughs> yes. yes. And any of us who can support Miss Cecilia, let's be there for her. And um, next uh, month, we will be doing a um, presentation on what um, our upcoming grant is for those who are concerned and want to work with us in cleaning up Oakland and monitoring our air. And I want to thank everybody for being here, everybody who participated. Thank you for making this a beautiful uh, meeting. And our next meeting is... I can't see that. May 9th, and thank you, everyone. We have the evaluation forms right there. Thanks for joining, and uh, see you all next time. Thank you. Good. Good.